Hello, welcome everybody. This is our technology class. And so this is the going to be the first lesson that we do as part of second quarter. And it's a special week this week. So I was thinking about doing something with uh, bullying again, because I know last year we did the upstander week and October is National Bullying Prevention Month. But since the month ended and then I thought, well, Let's try something different this year. So November is actually National Career Development Month. And so that's when students are focusing on learning about different careers and starting to think about what do I want to do with my life, right? After you're done in school, uh, what do you want to do for your career? And so we're going to do a spotlight on technology, the digital industry. And we're going to spend some time looking at some different jobs that are in the tech field. And so I have some information to share with you guys. And then I have a, actually a few video clips to show of people talking about um, what they do for their job in the tech field. And also we're going to talk about um, how you need tech skills in pretty much every job. And so even if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm not going into the tech industry, uh, please listen and pay attention because before we end, you're going to be like, wow, I really need tech skills in any industry, any career that you go into. So that's what we're going to be doing. We'll be celebrating this week and uh, for National Career Development Month uh, by looking at some jobs in the technology field. Um, okay. So just a few statistics. So the field of technology is growing rapidly, meaning that there are a lot of jobs in the tech field. And it's expected to grow about 16.5% in the next five years, which if you think about it, that is a lot of jobs coming about. So for you guys thinking for your future, um, this may be a field for you. OK, and so as Christians, you know, we are the light in any field that we go into. Um, but I really feel like te the technology field needs an extra light. Right. And especially all of you guys who love video games and you love YouTube, you love social media. Guess what? They need you to work in those careers so that you can bring the light to those careers and you can change the world. Right. Okay, so what is the digital industry? Well, you know, it's it's everywhere. So like I was saying in the beginning, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, I work in a tech job, I'm a computer programmer. No, guess what? The digital industry is part of every job. And so um, a lot of companies now have are moving digital. And so you might, I don't know if you've ever heard people say about, oh, you're going paperless. So this means that instead of receiving something on a paper, you receive it through your email or you go to a website and you log in and you get the information. And that's just like PCA this year, right? They moved to Gradelink. So guess what? They went paperless. So your report cards are on Gradelink. That means you log in and you see them on the website, right? And instead of getting this paper copy, which I don't know, maybe they might still print a paper copy, but they don't have to because it's on the website. And so a lot of companies, schools, this is what it means to go digital and to be a part of the digital industry. It also does mean, um, you know, computer programming, right? Of course, creating new software apps um, in the field of robotics, right? Machine learning, all of the for artificial intelligence, all of those things that we've been studying about. Yes, that is part of the digital industry. Um, so COVID-19 has really changed the digital industry because even if you guys think about our lives, right? I mean, we would not have been able to continue learning without Zoom, right? I mean, Zoom is a company and they created a product what, that allows people to go on and have videos together, meaning that I can see you, your teacher can see you and teach you, right? And you can communicate with them and feel like you're in the classroom somewhat, right? Have this digital classroom. And so this has really changed our lives and enabled us to continue with our lives. People working from home, right? Um, doing school from home. 
um, being able to communicate with loved ones that you maybe can't visit because of COVID-19. So it really has expanded the jobs in the technology field and it's expanded people using the digital industry and these skills in any part of their any job, right? So a few other things to mention how COVID-19 has really changed our world. Um, people using digital media, right? Like all of you guys, right? Using Zoom, using Instagram, using Facebook to watch live videos. Maybe you watch church on Facebook or on YouTube, right? Maybe you watch church on YouTube or you watch some other things on YouTube. The number of people subscribing to these digital media outlets has gone up like a so crazy, right? Because all of us have been using it. So what does that mean? That means more jobs in those fields, right? And even thinking about the virus itself, companies have come about now for what? Tracking the virus, right? They have apps where you can register and then they can track everybody in the area that has the virus. Um, tracing people who have been in contact. These are all using the digital industry in these jobs. So what kind of jobs are in the digital industry? A lot of different jobs. It's not just your typical computer programmer. Yes, that is a job, but we're going to take a look now at a lot of different jobs that are in the technology field. And hopefully it will open your mind to see that there are so many different types of jobs. So here's just a little visual for you guys. Software developer, data scientist, right? How many of you guys have, when you had career day here at school, you probably came in and said, I wanna be a nurse, I wanna be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, right? How many of you came in and said, I wanna be a data scientist or I wanna be a social media manager, right? Probably not because you didn't even know that these jobs existed which is why we're spending this week getting an awareness of the different jobs that are inside of the technology field, right? So let's take a look at some of them. So some technical jobs. So these are the jobs where you really do need, you do a lot of the coding. You need to really have that technical special knowledge of code, right? So a software developer, that would be your computer programmer, right? What do they do? They write code, right? They create new software. Um, they problem solve. Um, what is a UX designer? That's a real job. And you know what it is? It's an experience designer. So they look at the different apps and software and they say, is this going to be enjoyable? Is it accessible for people that have disabilities? Um, you know, think about the design, the psychology behind it. That's what a UX designer does. So maybe that might be you. Maybe you're like, yeah, I like to always take look at the, the website and think to myself or the app. Hmm, what kind of experience am I having using this? And people who would use this, how would they feel after they're done using it? That's a real job. Okay, so that might be you. Um, a QA analyst. These are people that test the different apps and software and games, and they look for bugs or mistakes in the code, and they help to improve and make it better. That's a real job, a real job, testing apps, testing games. People get paid for that. A game developer, somebody who actually designs games, right? Again, this is a real job that's in the tech field. Um, so hopefully your, your mind is starting to get open now to realize that there are so many different types of jobs that are inside of the tech field. Let's look at some of the business roles. So these are jobs that work on the business side in, of the digital industry. So a project manager, this is somebody who oversees any digital project. So for example, if a, there's a team of people working to create an app, they need to have a project manager. What is that person doing? They're setting deadlines and saying, okay, how, you need to have all of your code done by this day so we can put all the code together. And then we can have the UA, the QA analysts come in and, and, make, and test for any problems, right? So they have to really manage the whole project. So that's a job. If you like see yourself as being a leader of a team of people, you might become a project manager at a tech company. A data scientist. 
This is somebody, so, you know, we've been learning about Microsoft Excel all of these years, right? And, and Google Sheets, right? How do we store data? Well, guess what? All of these apps and games and websites, do you know how much data they collect? It's a real job to be a data scientist. You analyze the data, you gather it, you look at it, you look for trends. Um, what time of day do people mostly play the game? Um, what types of games do they like? Um, if you're looking at a different apps, right? I mean, there's so many different pieces of information that these people, so if you like looking at information and you, you're really into numbers and looking at what's popular, the trends and things, this is a real job, a data scientist job. A product manager, somebody who looks at the whole product. What is a product? An app is a product, right? You go into the app store, all of those apps are products that they're selling to people. Um, if you belong to a Steam and you buy any games on there, games are products, right? There's people who have to manage those products and look at them and say, okay, you know, um, how are they doing? How could we make them better? So that's a real job. That could be you. A digital marketing manager. So somebody who, guess what? They have to think about how can we get people to buy this app or buy this game or use this website? They have to market it to people, advertise it to them, come up with ways to promote the product so that people will actually buy it. That might be a job for you. This used to be like advertising, but now advertising has really moved to the digital. So people now have to be digital marketing managers. That could be a job for you. Let's look at some creative roles now. So the creative people are responsible for coming up with the content. They might be more expressive, artistic, right? They like to come up with their, they just have a great imagination, a web designer, somebody that, goes and designs a website. I don't know if you've been on <clears throat> a lot of different websites, you'll see the ones that are a lot more flashier, they're more professional. That's a job. A web designer had to go in and come up and think about how could we make this website look attractive to the people who are going to be using it? That they're going to say, wow, this website looks amazing. And when they click around on it, they're like, wow, this thing is designed really really well. That's a web designer's job. A copywriter. Okay, this job is so important. We're going to be studying this in our digital citizenship, but copywriting is so important because we have to be able to um, know how to market our product, right? But how can we then be careful when we're sharing something online, right? Because we're using it in the digital world. Um, and so this could include articles, um, advertising content, email marketing, and so many forms of media. Um, this could be your job. If you're really good at communicating through writing um, and coming up with different um, ideas that way, you might be a copywriter at a tech company. Um, some other creative roles, a social media manager. Oh my gosh, I bet everyone's raising their hand. Me, me, I wanna do that job. What do you do? You market through social media. So you advertise the products through Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of those ads and things that come up. Guess who's doing that job? The social media manager. And they're trying to build a brand, right? With whatever the product is, that when people see it on the social media, they're like, oh, I want to go get that game. That's a job for you guys in the tech field. A UI designer. So these people, they work on more of the visuals, right? When they're designing a website or an app, a game, how does it look visually, right? Does it look attractive um, that people will say, woo, that game looks amazing, right? That's a real job, a UI designer. They actually have to think about the design of what they're working on. Okay, so I'm gonna put on this video now and we're gonna take a look at some careers in tech um, and then I'll come back and I'll talk about some of the skills that we need to work in the tech field. And then we're going to take a look at our activity that we're going to work on today. Okay, so let me just put this on. Hang on one second. Okay, here we go. Ah, always a good question. What are you guys thinking? I, let me think about this. Uh, uh, yeah. I love computer science because I can build something from like start to finish and make it do something. 
I'm always one of those that has has hand movements and stuff like I don't really sit still. I'm really curious. I look unique. I, I like to fidget. I also love the fact that anything I do does have a lot of impact. I'm a software engineer. I work on our payment fraud detection team. Effectively, we catch bad guys. Anytime that you tap buy on your Android app, or anytime Google accepts money, we're there to make sure that they don't get away with uh, stealing money from our users or Google itself. We call them fraudsters, by the way. Uh, that is actually the official name, fraudsters. We improve our systems, they're improving their systems. They're engineers too, in a lot of ways. And so they'll have like this infrastructure that's attacking us, and we'll have this infrastructure that's stopping them. And so it's like, you get to wake up every day and kind of go like, I'm gonna catch some people that are bad. <laughs> yes, got one. Yeah, guys. It's both exciting, frustrating, and terrifying all at the same time, which is, you know, the way that life has got to be, I think. When I was like 12 or 13, I do remember the first time I made one of those little Lego Mindstorms like actually just move. It had a little like puzzle piece interface you could do and you just like take these puzzle pieces and you could tell it like move forward, turn left, do this, kind of do this again. With just a few commands I can have this little robot run around the room and search for light. Once I got that going it was kind of like you sort of expand from there. You know then what like a for loop is, you know what these other things are and then like from there I was able to kind of move on. There's a little bit of breaking your brain to sort of think like a computer because like you are in a lot of ways, it's like learning a new language. You have to kind of like go, okay, now I get it. I can now think in that that way. Stick with it. It, uh, it. it There will be a point where you're kind of like, oh, I got this now. I think I actually understand how this works. My name's Kinsley. I work at Facebook as a software engineer. The goal of Facebook is to make the world a more open and connected place. I work on the Save for Later team, which lets you save uh, cool things you find on the internet, like videos, posts, things like that, so you can come back to them later. I like working at Facebook because I get to work with like a lot of smart people. I get to work on something that like over a billion people use on the planet. I just enjoy work with my coworkers. Having diverse team members is uh, also important because, uh, especially like at Facebook, where you're trying to make a product for um, the whole world, you can't have like just a single set of people. You want you want to represent the people you're trying to serve. You may use Facebook one way, but someone could be using it completely differently. Or people are in different situations, so like not everyone has like the newest smartphone. You might have to remember that there's some people in like other countries and lower end devices. You have to make sure it works for them. Well, like that, it sort of scratches that like problem solving part of my brain. So I get to come in and just sort of think about how to do something, then get to see if I, my idea works or not. <laughs> um, computers are really good at telling you really quickly if uh, something's going to work or not. <laughs> yeah. Probably my first job I remember wanting to have was I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> I went to this uh, summer program when I was like in third or fourth grade, um, and someone there taught me how to use this um, old programming language called HyperCard. And with that, I made like a really basic game where you like built like a little ship and like flew it across the solar system. After that, I like sort of just played around with computers a little bit. Um, and I was lucky; my high school had a programming class, so I had to learn more about uh, programming there. A career in tech is attainable by anyone. All you really need to get started is just a computer. You don't have to start large, you can make something super small. I made like a, a game that only I ever played, <laughs> or when I was in high school, I made uh, like a program only I use that would like help me solve my math problems. <laughs> Computer science is definitely a creative medium. Uh, there's not like one way to solve a problem. Uh, so it's up to you to sort of come up with the given your constraints to come up with a creative solution. But probably the best way to get started is just uh, you can try like emulating something you like, like an app you like or a game or something. Make something just for yourself. There's nothing really stopping you. My name is Federico Gomez Suarez. I'm originally from Puebla, Mexico. Most of my family are engineers, but they are engineers who do things with their hands. Uh, I turn out to be an engineer who codes. I write software which scans images, looking for bad images, images that we know are illegal. I work very closely with organizations like the National Center for Missing Children. At the end of the day, the kind of content that we work on is content we just don't want to have online. And we 
are impacting the people who have been affected by that content by just making sure it doesn't get distributed again. When I was about 12 or 13, there was a research lab close to where I used to live. It turned out that they needed someone who could code. I really couldn't code at the time, but I said, oh, I'll do it. I'll work on this for the summer. So I started working at the lab and I had there my book of C language that I was just reading through, trying to learn how to move this little engine. And it took me forever to just figure it out, but eventually it worked. And I just enjoyed doing it. I would stay late at night until I saw it working and I realized that that was something I really liked doing. When I was my freshman year in Mexico, in a small school, I decided I wanted to work for any of the big companies in the US. So I sent my resume to every company I knew and I didn't hear anything for a year. All of a sudden I got an email saying Microsoft was coming to recruit and I prepared, went all in and I didn't pass the first interview. But they saw that I was so passionate about doing something with code that they interviewed me the next year. And after that, I ended up coming here to Microsoft. To solve a real life problem is not only about the code. The code is a piece of it, but you need to think about the whole ecosystem. And Microsoft has people who have expertise on all these different areas. So I meet with lawyers, I meet with business analysts, I meet with different people in the company to be able to understand the problem better and together try to really find a solution. Usually I spend the mornings meetings and do that kind of work and then in the evening I just put my headphones on and just start coding. Find something that you're passionate about, like a problem in the world that you think is important and, I, and then look how you can partner with nonprofit or find people who are already working there and help them. You know, use your skill, use your passion, use your energy to help solve a problem. You will realize that you can bring a lot to the table. Come up with new ideas on how you can have impact. Just keep knocking doors. Eventually, one does open. software engineer at Instagram. I work on the Android app for Instagram. <laughs> Do you want me to say that all in one sentence? Uh, Instagram is just a good product. It's just something very user-facing and people, it's like very dear to people's hearts. I always liked gadgets. Other than that, like I hate coding didn't enjoy it at all, so I was like, I'm not gonna do this for life. Like, there's no way I'm gonna do this in college. I just passed it barely, you know. It was just text on a screen. There was no, there were no pictures, there were no graphics. Like, I just didn't get it. Like, how is this text making the computer do this? I started enjoying coding after college when I started doing marketing and they needed a website to be built and so I just ended up coding, like learning how to do a website that way and then I redid it multiple times and then learned about like UI, and interaction design. I would just do it day and night. I just spent hours and hours at this computer trying to fix things and like get things to work because it's so much fun. <laughs> just this hairs on the back of your neck just start to stand up and you're just like, oh I got it, it works, you know. That's when I started to love coding. What computer science is, is that it's a way to impact the world. I would say try it out. There's so many different things you could do, uh, whether you could be coding mobile applications, websites, desktop applications. See if your mind works that way and if you like it. And if you love technology, I don't understand why you're not coding. My name is Pauline Guscova, I'm a data scientist at Electronic Arts, and my job is to build the machine learning components for the player and developer experience. If I was to give some advice, it would be just to follow your passion, just to explore your interests. If you love gaming, then great. Uh, figure out how the games are built. And I think that's how a lot of people actually started out at EA. They wanted to learn how the games were built. They wanted to build their own games, and they went out and did that. 
For me, I was really interested in machine learning and the idea of doing that in the context of video games just sounded really awesome. And right now I love it because there's so much opportunity still left. When I was younger, I remember my dad was a grad student and I would spend hours at a robotics lab. So I saw all the newest tech as soon as it came out. I remember dial-up connections. I remember every version of the MP3 player. And since my dad was an early adopter and I was surrounded by this, I kind of grew up with the expectation that I would be coding. And I kind of viewed coding as a necessary skill. And so I went to engineering school, I studied science, I studied math, I took all of the necessary classes, but what got me really excited was machine learning and all of the really cool applications and how you can teach computers to do things that only humans were previously able to do. And so at Electronic Arts, you can think about how instead of just getting a game that's the same game as everyone else. You can get a game that's personalized to you, where the content is unique to what you're interested in, and then the difficulty is adjusted to what's fun for you. And that's what the world's moving towards. I remember when I was taking programming in high school, it was a really small class, and there were really only two girls in the whole class. And it just had these nerdy connotations. And now, many years later, it's become so much more popular there's so many people and so many resources to help you get into it and so many applications. So even if you're not interested in just being a programmer, even if you're interested in biology or if you're interested in political science, there's so many applications for it. And it's such an important skill that I would highly recommend that everyone try it out. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I feel like they did a good job in, the, in that video series explaining um, and just get taking a deeper look into some of these tech jobs. Um, okay, so let's just quickly talk about some skills that you need to work in the digital industry. So there's something called hard skills and soft skills. And so hard skills are things that you need to have specialized training in, like coding, right? And soft skills are things that are less teachable but you have to still learn them like emotional intelligence, right? Like our second step lessons that we do here at PCA. Um, okay, so let's just quickly look at those. I won't spend too much time because I want to move on to our activity, but some examples of hard skills in the tech field are data analytics, right? Learning how to use Microsoft Excel, right? And put data in and manipulate your data. Um, coding and programming, right? Learning the different coding languages, like how we do code.org here and we use Scratch as well. Um, social media, right? Learning how to actually use social media to promote a product. Um, blockchain, um, if you've heard anything about cryptocurrencies, this is a technology um, where they actually can trade these things. So that's something that's super new and emerging. Um, content creation, um, learning how to actually create images, videos, audio um, that can be used in um, this industry. Um, some soft skills are collaboration, right? These are things that we learn about in second step. How do you work on a team with other people, right? How do you use empathy, right, to think about um, okay, where does, what's their perspective, right? I want to actually take time to care about it. Um, having the emotional intelligence to be able to make an app or a product where you're thinking about how's it going to make somebody else feel, right? So these skills actually matter in the tech field and they matter in every field. Adaptability. Can you adapt to a changing environment, right? Our, our world is constantly changing. And creativity, um, this industry rewards new ways of thinking. So if you're somebody who is always loves to think of new ideas, you would really enjoy the tech field. Um, some salaries here, I just threw it in because since we're exploring careers, um, software developers, um, they make in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Project managers as well, um, they could make over a hundred thousand. Social media managers, maybe about 50 to 75,000. Um, and people with digital skills on average, they get paid higher than those who do not have any digital skills. So that's in any industry, right? If you're able to apply technology to the industry, um, you most likely will get paid more because you have a skill that they need, right? 
Um, okay, so now we're going to go into our activity. So I'm going to show you guys what that is. Everybody's going to get this sheet here. I'm going to email it to you. And what I want you to do is go through each of the boxes. This is a career cluster interest survey. So you go through each of these things. They have activities that describe what I like to do. They have personal qualities that describe me and then school subjects I like. So you are supposed to circle in each of the boxes as many that are you and then write the total that you circled inside of the circle. So for example, you read through each one, learn how to make things grow and stay alive. Is that something that you like to do? If it is, circle it. Um, be outdoors in all kinds of weather, circle it. Um, something that describes you, are you self-reliant? Circle it. Do you like math? Circle it. Circle the things in box one and then write how many you circle. Go through each of the boxes and do the same thing. Read each one in the box and circle the one that is you. So just quickly be honest with yourself. Don't think too much about it. Just what first comes to mind and circle it if it's you. Some of the school subjects you might not recognize because these are a part of like a trade school, like for example, electrical trades, heat, air conditioning, um, construction trades. If it's something that you think you might be interested in in the future, you could circle it. Otherwise, don't circle it. Only circle the things that are things that you are interested in. So you're going through, there's, there, are, um, there are 16 different categories. So you're going to go through each of them and circle as many are you and then write the number. Then you'll look at your 16 and find the ones that have the most, the top three, okay? So I'm gonna be sending you this Word doc and you're gonna fill it in. So you're going to, um, let me just make this a little bit bigger. So for your first part, you'll take the survey and then you're going to write down the top three career clusters, okay? So was it box 14, 15? Um, and I will tell you guys what they are. Um, number one is agriculture, food, and natural resources. Number two, architecture and construction. Each of them have a title. Um, uh, 15 is science, technology, engineering, and math. 16, transportation. So you'll find Put in how many you circled for each one and the ones with the most, the top three with the most, type them in here, your top three career clusters, okay? Because then I'm going to show you this website that we're going to use to explore these careers. And so you're going to then go to this website, which I will send you the link to. This is called ONET. This is a great website for exploring careers. And they have all 16 of the career clusters. So you're going to then choose one career cluster from your top three. So choose the one that you're most interested in. You can type it here, and then you're gonna to go to it in ONET. So I'm just gonna pretend that we chose the science technology one. Press go. When you press go, you're going to see all the different careers that are inside of this career cluster. So for example, aerospace engineers are part of it. Um, electronics engineers, electrical engineers. Um, I'm just gonna, let's see, let's just choose one. There are so, so many of them. Let's choose one of the engineers, let's uh, a computer hardware engineer. So you're gonna choose one of the jobs and click on it. And when you click on it, it's going to give you a summary of that job. So it'll tell you tasks. What do you do as a um, computer hardware engineer? Well, guess what? It tells you right here. Let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys. Oh, I don't think I can. Um, but it tells you that you build, test, and modify prototypes, right? Using computer simulation. And then it tells you what technology skills you need, okay? Um, so hang on one second, somebody's at the door. So you're going to choose, sorry, you're going to choose one of the careers and then you're gonna look in the technology skills. And I want you to then inside of the, the sheet, after you choose the career, so you would type it. So for example, if I chose um, computer hardware engineer, I'd go into my sheet, I'd say I chose computer 
hardware engineer. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the technology skills that I need for that job. So you can just copy and paste if you want. Just highlight, copy it, and then paste it inside of your Word doc here. And now this is telling you all of the technology skills that you would need to become a um, computer hardware engineer. You need to have analytical or scientific software experience with all these different programs. Um, you need to know the certain software. Um, and these are all the different things you would need to know. Um, so now let's pretend really quick that you chose one of the fields that, so you're thinking, well, you know what? I'm going into education. So I want to be, um, let's say, choose something inside of education. I want to be a kindergarten teacher. Okay, guess what? Kindergarten teachers, they need technology as well. Computer-based um, training software. Um, you might need to, you need to know how to use email. You need to know how to use Microsoft Office, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel, uh, Microsoft Word. These are all technology skills that a kindergarten teacher would need to know how to use, right? So you're, what you're going to be doing for your homework is filling in this Word doc. So after you do your survey and you come up with your top three career clusters, you're going to put the top three in here, choose one of the career clusters, go to the ONET website, and then go to your career cluster. So if you chose education, pick one of the careers from the list, click on it, and then you're going to put in what technology skills you would need for that job. So here's librarian. They need to know how to use library software, right? They need to know how to use a database interface, right? To retrieve things, an information retrieval search. So every job, so the reason we're doing this this week is to get you guys to see that every career out there, you need to have technology skills. And so hopefully it's opening up a greater awareness for you um, of why digital skills matter and why the soft skills matter as well, right? Our emotional intelligence, technology, emotional intelligence, they go together and they're a part of your future career, okay? So for your homework, you will fill this out. I'm gonna send you everything that you need to do this. And then you're gonna email me this sheet back with all of your answers typed in there. So you could copy and paste this into Google Docs if you want and then share it. I think that would probably be the easiest way. And then I will send you all of the websites that you need to fill this in, okay? And just have fun this week on this website exploring the different careers inside of your three career clusters because maybe you'll get inspired for a career that you really wanna do for your future, right? And so I hope you guys enjoyed this week. I hope this wasn't too long. Um, and it gave you a greater awareness of some careers in the tech field and also digital skills that are part of every career field. And I hope that it helped you to maybe narrow down some career careers that you're interested in for your future, right? Okay, guys, I'm going to really be excited to see these things come back and see what careers you choose and um, your top three career clusters. It'll be fun to um, share these and see them, okay? All right, thanks for listening. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.